Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use the Linux operating system as your primary operating system as a data scientist. Now, most data scientists, especially if they deal end-to-end -end kind of full stack, you're going to use Linux at some point. You're probably familiar with how to go into the command line remote into a cloud service or something like this. This is looking at how to go all in. You are using Linux, in this case Ubuntu, as your primary GUI operating system and how you might manage typical data science workloads. For this, I'm going to be using a Lenovo P53 that Lenovo was kind enough to loan me for a couple of weeks for the YouTube channel. We're going to see how you can make use of this system that comes with Linux already completely pre-installed and ready to go. But everything we're looking at is completely open. So you can use this on any computer that you like, but you'd have to go through the trouble of setting it all up. Whereas this one comes pretty much good to go. So why would you want to run a Linux environment anyway? I mean, I, I don't particularly have anything against Windows. I use it often. I use Microsoft Word and Excel and use those to collaborate with other people. I use the Adobe products like Photoshop and Premiere at times. Also Camtasia, which is not Adobe, to produce these videos. These are not available on, on Linux, so I typically still find myself using a Windows computer. It is possible to go completely into Linux and find equivalents of all of those, and I'll show you some of those as I, as I get into there. But here's the real frustration that I have with Windows sometimes when I am working with something like Auto Glue On. This is really cool. I'll be doing videos on this pretty soon. This is AutoML. It's AWS or Amazon's AutoML. Now you don't have to run it necessarily in their cloud environment. You can run it on your own computer. So long as your computer is Linux. Uh, I think you can also get this working on Mac, but you won't be able to use a GPU. So if you if you look at this, okay, auto glue on, um, and then the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Auto glue on install and you go to the install program ready to find out how to install it and look at this OS Linux Mac source Windows where where is Windows there is no Windows so then the next thing I will sometimes do uh, is and you can look at the notes too. Auto glue on requires Python 3.6 or 3.7. Linux is the only operating system fully supported for now. Complete and Mac OS versions will be available soon. In software engineering, what does soon mean? That means anywhere from two weeks to two years to 20 years. I don't know, never. So maybe they'll, I'm sure they will get to this at some point. When TensorFlow first came out, it was Linux only as well, then supported Mac and then finally supported Windows. So the next thing I tend to, to search is, okay, auto glue on WS2, WSL is definitely an option, but if you just look on Windows, usually you'll find an issue raised for this, and you can kind of get an idea of how close they're, they're, they're maybe getting. Enable, uh, they usually tell you to run the Docker image. This doesn't sound promising, likely requires significant work. So you can kind of monitor and see, see where things are going. Now WSL2, Windows Subsystem for Linux, I definitely use this in Windows as well, but things like, say, NVIDIA Rap, just does not work in WSL2, even if you're using the cutting, cutting edge, at least as of the recording of the video, version. So to really run these things in their native environments, they are developed in Linux first. So if you want to use the really cutting edge stuff, you need a Linux environment. So let's flip to the ThinkPad P53. And there we are. We are in Linux. So this is Ubuntu. 
there are several styles of it available. Typically when I am dealing with GUI, I work with Ubuntu. There's other flavors of there. I've seen some people that are quite happy with mint. Haven't seen mint around as much lately, but various flavors of it. The ThinkPad P53 that I have comes with Ubuntu pre-installed. So that's, that's the one I'm using and I'm reasonably familiar with it. Now, if you're using Linux as your primary desktop, there's entire videos on switching from Windows to Ubuntu or to Linux. And really, I'm not gonna get into the general desktop user sort of things. Instead of using Word and Excel, you're going to be using LibreOffice. And I use LibreOffice Writer, and I also use LibreOffice Calc kind of as a replacement for Excel. I actually like LibreOffice Calc better than Excel because you can import things and not have it automatically try to interpret numbers and generally mesh your file up. It can do a clean import, which is not something Excel can do without VBA. So for your general desktop productivity, you're going to be using tools like that. And things that I, I tend to miss are Zoom for online meetings, just all the different myriad of online conference tools that I have to go through in my day-to-day -day job. Some people use WebEx, some people use Zoom, some people use Teams. It's If there's a web client, and more and more there is, then you're probably in pretty good shape. Now, what you're going to want to use to install GUI software is this Ubuntu software bag. This is basically managing Snap, which is a Linux. There's tons of installment managers, package managers, program managers on Linux. This one lets you basically search for a desktop application that you might want to be installing like PyCharm, something like that. A lot of the programmer utilities you're going to find available here on, on the Linux environment. However, the really, really powerful thing that you're going to want to deal with is the command line and that's the terminal so i i use this a great deal you'll use it for get i don't really like gui applications for get i tend to use all command line even in windows or mac so that way it's just the same no matter what environment i happen to be in or if i am logged into an ec2 instance in amazon cloud i can just i just do get command line and and i'm done apt get install i do this a lot to install the command line applications that that i need now if you're using get your there's a dot SSH directory, that is where you will put your get generated uh, private key so that you're able to, you give get the repository your public key, you keep your private key, and that's how it authenticates. So I can just go right from the command line and and get my files that I need off of GitHub. Chromium is the browser that you'll be typically using. You can even use Edge now, Microsoft, which is, I think they're a recompile of Chromium. It probably has some Microsoft specific things in it, which might be good or bad, depending on what you're doing. But since more and more applications are completely web hosted, I can just go right into GitHub and, or other, I mean, Office 365 that I get my email from the university, all this I can use just right through Chromium. So this makes it really pretty easy to switch to this as your primary environment. Desktop publishing and video production would probably be the pain points for me, although I'm sure there are all these applications there and available. It's just usually when you hear somebody switching to Linux as their desktop operating system, graphic artists and video production people are not among them. But who knows? Uh, it's certainly entirely possible. That being said, there is GIMP available, which is very similar to Photoshop. I use that a lot. I do prefer Photoshop. Uh, it's I'm just more used to it. And it seems like to me, it seems it seems easier to work with, especially not coming from a graphic artist background. I'm a coder. Then other applications, Remia, I use that to connect to Windows machines through remote desktop. 
Sublime Text is a great text editor, although I try to use VS Code for most of what I do. So if I'm going to run something that has .py files, like for example, if I go to my repositories, and I'll go to my academic papers, and I'm just going to grab it with HTTPS. If you're the author of it, usually use SSH, but I just want to grab a quick copy just to demonstrate this. And I'm going to do get, clone, and then this. And then I'm good to go. So if I'm using VS Code, it's really exactly like you're in Windows or Mac. So now in Visual Code, I can just go and basically open the file that I am interested in. So now in Visual Code, I can just go and open the folder, map it in just like I normally would. In Unix, you have to get used to buttons being in slightly different places, like the OK up here. But now we're pretty much there. I can open up and run these Python or R scripts using full syntax highlighting, and then there's other extensions that you probably want to install. I'll probably do an entire video just on setting up VS Code like I like it. The other tools that you will commonly use as a data scientist in Linux would be Docker. That is available and easy, easily ran. I also use the NVIDIA Data Science Workbench, or platform as they call it. I can basically just use a command such as this once I've installed it. I've got another entire video just on how to install this onto, onto a computer. It's only available, unfortunately, in, in Linux, mainly because you need full virtualization of the GPU and you need NVIDIA Docker and this stuff works in Windows subsystem for Linux but it's just not in the common you have to install an early release version of Windows at least currently to do this so a lot of what I'm running will be things like this where I run the container and it launches and you're basically operating through a browser because you're using Jupyter and the associated tools. So this is this is started up. I can now simply just go to localhost 8888 and now I am running my notebook entirely within a Docker image thanks to the NVIDIA data science stack. That makes all of that quite easily. I also use Conda environments in Linux if I do want to truly run it outside of a Docker image on the actual machine. And the Conda environments really just like I work with them in Windows. This is running in the Docker image, so there's not as many there. If I were to exit from that and just go into my own Jupyter notebook, running actually on this machine instead of in a Docker image. Now I can switch between the various environments that I've set up for TensorFlow and Rapids AI. All these things work natively on a Linux environment, so that becomes very handy. Now, you may not want to actually go through all of the intensities of getting Linux set up and running it as a desktop environment. Like I said, I am not a Linux desktop environment user. I use it on workstations where I'm doing serious data science work and integration work and it's also completely compatible with the cloud because then I put it up into EC2 instances which are running often Ubuntu as well or AWS's own Linux depending on what I am actually doing but Google Colab is kind of becoming everybody's summer home so to speak for the Linux world if you don't want to live there permanently Colab gives you a free GPU, free RAM. I use actually Colab Pro to get additional power. Sometimes it's just very convenient for me, even though I have kind of a high-end laptop and desktop with GPUs enabled in both. It's sometimes good to just run this completely in the cloud or I will run it on EC2 instances as well. So this is a quick overview of the tools that I use in Linux, at least for data science. Thank you for watching my video, and if you're interested in artificial intelligence, deep learning, all things AI, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel and consider giving this video a like. Thank you very much.